This first tutorial is designed to introduce you to Quest3D's development environment and interface. We'll start off by focusing on the general interface of Quest3D. We'll then move on to the channel section, which is the part of the program in which you create your project. We'll first look at the interface of the channel section, and then move on to navigating around it. Next we'll look at the render loop, which is the process which takes place to make your project work. After that we'll focus on how channels are linked together. We'll then take a closer look at how the channel section works. Next we'll look at the animation section which is the part of the program which enables you to quickly change the orientation of objects in your scene. And finally we'll focus on the object section which is the part of the program that enables you to change the visual properties of objects. By the end of this tutorial you should be familiar with the basic Quest3D interface. Let's start this tutorial by looking at the interface of Quest3D. Quest3D is split into three main sections. This is the channel section which is the heart of the program. This is where you build your entire project from. The animation section is where you can see a big 3D preview of your project here and you can also see a list of objects where you can change their orientation and you have a timeline along the bottom where you can animate objects. The object section is where you can change the visual properties of your objects. So again you'll see a list of all the objects in your scene here and you'll be able to see a big 3D window here which contains that object isolated. And on the left and on the right you've got settings where you can change the visual properties of this object. Now let's have a look, closer look at the channel section. You see at the top here we have a few tabs here which allow you to choose which section you're in. Now I've just given you an overview of the animation and object section. There's also an array section and an additional nature painting section which we will look at later. They're more advanced topics that aren't essential for understanding the basics. You also have tabs here which can select run mode, edit mode and run slash edit mode. Now basically these change the way in which user input is routed to your project. In run mode, all user input will be routed to your project, so shortcuts to the editor will be disabled. In edit mode, you'll be able to edit your project and no user input will be routed to your project. In run edit mode, all user input is routed to both. The two tabs here control which camera you are currently looking through. The tab on the right is called the camera view and this allows you to look through the camera in which you define in your project. The tab on the left is called the perspective view and this is a camera which you can freely rotate and look around your scene from. Now to do this if you hold down the alt key and your right mouse button you can then zoom in and out by moving the mouse up and down. If you then move the mouse left mouse button whilst holding down the alt key you can rotate and look around your scene. If you hold down the middle mouse button and move the mouse around you can pan this camera. So this is really useful for looking at your scene from different angles. To the left of these tabs we have standard window tabs. Now these allow you to do things such as starting a new project, opening a project, saving, importing and we also have one here called view all and this will basically set the view of your channel graph so that you can see everything which is going on. The three tabs here control what you're currently looking at in this big window here. Now we're currently looking at the channel graph. If we click the animation 3D view you can see you now have a big 3D preview of your project. The third tab, the array manager, is a more advanced topic which we will look at later. So let's go back to our channel graph. To the right you can see there's a value which is counting down called snap. Now this is basically a countdown to the next auto save. So when this value reaches zero your project will be automatically saved. And to the right of that you can see another thing here called restore. Now restore basically just goes back to your last save or you can see you have dates and times for previous auto saves you can go back to. We're now going to focus on the channel section, first looking at its interface. If you look in the channel graph you can see we have a series of blocks. Now these blocks are called channels and these are what make up your project. Each of these channels has a particular function. Some may hold data such as a text, a texture or a sound. Others have a particular function, 
for instance switching between other channels or rendering an image. Now the function of a channel is very much linked to its type and the type will determine where this channel can link to. So for instance it would be quite pointless to link up a channel which is looking for a sound to a texture and this is where the types come in very useful. They prevent you from connecting channels to other channels which would serve no purpose. Later on in this tutorial we'll take a closer look at linking channels and channel types. Let's now take a look at the tabs on the left of the interface, first focusing on the templates tab. Now templates contains a set of predefined channels that are already linked together. For instance you see the simple scene template here is actually exactly what we're looking at there. If we scroll across and look at the channel list tab, this contains individual channels. So all of the channels available to you to make a project in Quest are in this list. So for instance if we press S and we find our start 3D scene channel you can see it's the same one there and we can drag it into the graph just by left clicking and dragging. To delete a channel you can just select it or select a selection of channels and then press the delete key. The selection tab here allows you to look at all of the channels which are used in your project. So you can see every single channel which is in our projects is in this list. The search tab allows you to search for channels in your project. So for instance if we type start in here and press search you can see we found our start 3D scene channel and if we click on it here it finds and selects that particular channel. It's also possible to customise the Quest 3D interface by right clicking on a tab. Here you can remove an existing tab or if you want to add an additional tab if you go to add window and choose the particular section you want here you can choose a new window to add to your interface. You can see there are a few tabs below here. Now these are basically for navigation around your project. You can see these yellow blocks here. Now these are actually directories. If we double click one of these we go into the directory. If we hit up, we go back up again. Or we can hit back and go to where we previously were. In this case they do the same thing. Let's now take a look at how we can navigate around the channel section. Now to pan across the channel graph you can either hold down your middle mouse button or you can left click and hold down the alt key. To zoom in the channel graph you can either use your scroll wheel on your mouse or if your mouse doesn't have a scroll wheel you can hold down the alt key and use the right mouse button and moving the mouse vertically will zoom in and out. Now you can see in the channel graph here we have a series of channels and we also have some yellow blocks here. Now these yellow blocks are actually folders which contain more channels. So if I left click and drag this folder over here I can then press the space key to unpack this folder. To pack it back up again I can just press the space key again. So this is possible with any channels. If I just make a selection and press space it will pack that into a folder. And If I select that folder and press space it will unpack it. Now you can see I can left click a channel and drag it around. If I want to select a channel and all the channels below it, if I hold shift down and then click it you can see all of its children are now selected. So this is very good for moving multiple channels around. It's also possible to draw a region around a series of channels and then move them like that. We'll now take a look at the render loop. Now you can see at the top of the channel graph we have a big arrow here. Now this indicates that this is our start channel. So Quest works by every channel calling its child from left to right. So you see what will happen here is our start 3D scene channel will call our render channel, our render channel will then call the camera, it will then call the cube, then di the directional light and then one program loop has been completed. The procedure will then start again exactly the same thing in the same order from left to right and the number of times this process is completed per second is the number of frames per second at which your project will be rendered. So for instance if we unlink our cube you can do this by selecting the link and then pressing the delete key. You can see it's now, delete, it's now disappeared from our preview in the bottom left. Now this is because the whole preview there is in real time. 